or my interview, part two. Three, two, one, boop. All right, let's do this. I have a few other memories. Some of y'all might find interesting. You might not, but too late now, you're already here. So let's see. Um, my dad's side of the family, I pretty much only knew uh, his sister, Anne, and his mom, Gran, uh, Nell Bell. But I mean, I've never, never in my life that I know of met my uh, paternal grandfather, Chester Lee Bell. Uh, apparently he had, I think, the story is nine wives over, over the course of his life. Just never met him, but apparently I have step aunts and uncles all over the place. Uh, this is this is the story of one of those. After I graduated high school, while I was going to college, I became a school bus driver. Thank you, phone. Put that on silent if you don't mind. A little late now, I know. But, uh, <laughs> so I, I'd, I'd driven a group of kids up to Abilene to, I think it was a choir contest or something. And of course, everybody, when you go to when you drive a bus to Abilene, you got to go to the mall, so you go upstairs or you ride the escalator. And the other thing was you had to go to Olive Garden. So our, we're on our obligatory trip to Olive Garden, and there was this, a couple with some kids sitting next to us, and they kept looking at me. They kept looking over at me and looking over at me and just kind of staring at me the whole time. And I didn't think anything of it. I mean, I, you know, I got a goatee. I'm kind of a, you know, uh, not necessarily typical looking guy <laughs> and they well, finally the lady leaned over and says uh pardon me is your name Damon yeah Damon Bell I'm like well I mean I'm, I'm wearing a you know a name you know a badge with my name on it and everything and I'm like yeah I'm your aunt Paula this is this is your uncle Pardon me? I, I mean, I have an Aunt Anne, and you're you're not her. No, no, we're we're, we're one of your 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 grandfather's grandfather's you know other your kitchen's other wife. One of your dad's step. You know, I'm your dad's stepsister. I had never heard any of this, and I'm like, well, it was someone. So I just you know I, I'm a trusting person. I believed him, and, and she wasn't lying, of course. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, well, tell me about yourself. You know, I don't know anything about you. She told me that she lived in San Angelo. And then she told me her address. I'm like, wait a minute. Where? She told us where on 37th Street. They literally lived a block from where I grew up, where I was still living probably. I, I was actually kind of pissed off when I got home and, you know, confronted my parents about this. I'm like, what's the story on this Aunt Paula? I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. This lived right around the corner. Why the hell didn't you ever say anything about this? It turns out, you know, Dad wasn't a big fan of his dad. He, I guess he had kind of abandoned him when he was uh, four years old or something. And so he doesn't have a lot of fond memories of his father. And that, you know, I, I totally understand that. That's uh, you know, I sympathize. That, that, that sucks. You know, I had a pretty good relationship with my dad, and you know, it's it sucks. But there's a you know, I'm looking on our family, you know, ancestry family tree now, and there's there's a ton of aunts and uncles out there I have that I've never even heard of. At least I got to meet one, and it was just, it was just the craziest thing that you know, met him in a friggin' olive garden at Abilene and wasn't even trying to. Just one of those weird, you know, fickle fingers of fate kind of a thing. <clears throat> Pardon me, sorry. Um, my cousin Pam. Ah, Pam, love her to death. Um, <laughs> I said she was, uh, she's actually not that much, uh, just a little bit younger than my mom, turns out. I didn't realize how close in age they were, but love her to death. Love all my cousins, every one of you. Every one, I'm not going to call you out by name because I'll forget one. And I did that yesterday with my sister and she got all pissed off. So I'm just going to ignore that. But I love all you. I love my entire family, all the ones that I've met at least. <laughs> And uh, uh, Pam, I went over, I, I guess she was, she was selling her motorcycle. And I've owned a couple before now, but I never owned a Harley Davidson. And she was selling one, and it was, it was a black motorcycle with hot pink flames. Yeah, that's right, hot pink you know, flames all down the tank. And 
maybe on the sides and stuff too. So I think I rode it for about a day and drove it directly over to a guy's house who was going to paint it for me. Now it's uh, all covered in Star Trek stuff, and it's the most awesome fucking motorcycle you've ever seen in your life, to be honest. <laughs> At least in, in my humble opinion, you know. But uh, thank you, Pam. I, I still have that motorcycle. I feel kind of bad because I hardly ever ride it anymore. I, this, this is San Angelo. It's West Texas. It is hotter than two rats screwing in a wool sock, to be honest. And it's just not any fun riding an air-cooled motorcycle when it's 104 degrees outside and the humidity is 90%. Just not, not a lot of fun. <laughs> um, my, my Uncle Billy, who I didn't hear about till I was, I think, 12 or 13, uh, apparently he was kidnapped by his aunt or grandma when he was a, a little, little kid. Uh, apparently my Mima had had a few friends over the ages and uh you know some of their <laughs> some paternity tests might be might be in order hey no judgment whatever you know that's fine her husband was a by all accounts kind of a kind of a jerk especially when he was drinking which he apparently did quite a bit of so uh, anyway the apparently biological you know uh, side of his his uh, paternal heritage kidnapped him from school one day and said, your, your mother doesn't love you and we're taking you home with us. And I guess they, they moved around a lot to avoid the law. And my grandma, she, she, she never gave up hope, never, never stopped uh, searching for him. Uh, when I was, it, it, it was around you know, the desert storm days. So 91, 92, uh, mom was working at the DPS and she, uh, may have accidentally entered his, social security number into their computer and found his address and it was in Decatur, Texas. So somehow they, uh, I think my aunt Linda wrote him a letter and uh, at, at some point, you know, he ended up calling us and kind of, I, I guess, scheduled the call and, and Mima was on the phone and she, I, I'd never seen her cry so much. She was just, as, I mean, just, just tears of joy. It's the first time she's hearing her son's voice in 40 years. And uh, we, I think he came down and, and we met him and his wife, Jackie, and we ended up going up there to Decatur to go see him at you know, some point later after that. And uh, He has a, somewhere there exists a tape of a sermon that he gave after he found out about Nemo, because he, 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 he was a kid. Of course, he believed the story that he was told that his mom didn't love him, and so he, he, he never tried to, to get a hold of her. Uh, I think my aunt had, anyway, I'm just going to skip all that. I don't know. He was, uh, yeah, on this tape, he told us how he was kind of a rebellious youth in a biker gang or something, you know, leather jacket. And he talked about something called hot boxing where they would put a dollar bill on their, their arms and have somebody hold it down. And you'd put a lit cigarette on it and hold it and see who could hold a cigarette burning on their arm the longest. And somehow this all segued into changing his life. He became a, a preacher or deacon in his church and and it was it was it was a real you know feel good story. It was great. It, it still kind of you know, makes me tear up a little bit hearing hearing about his life. And uh, on the way back from from that trip to Decatur to meet to to meet my uncle Billy, we stopped at some some big garage sale, maybe a church garage sale or something. I bought this, I think it was a three eighty six, maybe a four eighty six computer. Horrible. Oh, it it was old when it came out. You know, one of them. You know. Early '90s computers that had the turbo button, the turbo boost, like a like a friggin' Night Rider car, <laughs> which it actually helped to cheat on games on some of them. To turn the boost off and it would run at you know quarter speed, and boy, it's a hell of a lot you know hell of a lot easier to play some of those games. You could totally just cheat, really. But the only thing it did was play Monopoly, I think, maybe a couple other really really small games with them, inch you know, 1.44 meg discs. It was it was bad. At, at some point, it quit working. Something went wrong with it. I kicked it. Hey, what do you know? It really quit working after that. I, that's, I think that's when I first started to realize that my temper was a bit of an issue. Not that I've managed to control it now. I, I haven't. I still, when I get mad, I you know, don't handle it very well, usually. Not, not horribly. I, I, I have taken some breathing techniques and crap like that, but I probably 
Probably I'll look into meditation. But, uh, <laughs> fucking computers. I loved it, really. I mean, I had a lot of good fun with that thing. Uh, Meemaw. Good old Meemaw. When, when anybody in the family turned 16, she would donate her car to them for a year to use so they could save up some money and get their own car. Or in my case, my parents bought me my 81 Ford I mentioned earlier. And it was a 71 Buick. Horrible, horrible, horrible color of color of yellow and rust and bird crap. And it just now occurred to me that my shirt is almost the same color as this green screen. So this might end up being unusual if I start putting pictures or videos in the background. Awesome, Damon. Way to go. <laughs> then again, Uncle Johnny wore the fucking green when we interviewed him the other night. So I guess weird weirdness runs in our family. But I had a... And that car was was beat up, wore out. Didn't have all that many miles, but you know, letting two or three 16-year-olds drive it just was not not good for it. But I had a lot of good memories in that car. Um, thanks to Jennifer for a lot of those memories. I'm not going to mention her last name because she would kill me, even though she doesn't live in this state anymore. Her mom could still kill me. She doesn't live that far away. Um, a lot of good memories. And... <laughs> We went to we went to Abilene for some choir thing, I think, or it might have it might have been for like a one act play thing. But I took that car to the beach. It had no radio in it. It had a radio. Um, my brother put you know one of the very first CD players to probably even be installed in this town back in the early uh, early nineties, I guess. So I had this just giant gaping hole in the dashboard, and so I just stole my brother's boombox. Straight out of the friggin' 80s, you know. And I would have it just sitting in the seat. And of course, I had my knockoff discman that Meemaw actually won for me in a coloring contest. Ask Rachel about it. She will probably still get pissed off when she hears this story. Uh, me, me and my sister were, cousin probably, were had, had these little things from the local grocery store to color. And it was a contest. And I didn't feel like doing it. So Meemaw said, I'll, I'll just do the basics for you. And she ended up winning. <laughs> And so she said, I, I got this knockoff, you know, Discman, and I had a little tape adapter, and I plugged it in the boombox. And so, I mean, I had the worst stereo in, in town, I think, but, you know, anytime I wanted to, I could just you know, put the stereo on my shoulder and go out on the beach. And, you know, we took it to the beach all the time at Lake Nasworthy and had a lot of fun. And when I was in the one-act play, you know, I'd go hang out with them guys and, hey, portable, you know, portable music, portable stereo. It was the, I guess it had leaked. The freaking trunk would leak. And so it was all rotted out. And I think Dad had put some plywood in there and screwed it down. And it, it may have, a, one of the screws may have entered the gas tanks. But that thing smelled like gas so bad. You drove in, in it very long with the windows up and you would just be high as a kite, really. So we never put actual speakers in it because we were too afraid of it like, causing a spark and blowing us all up. But... Uh, that car, you'd turn it off, and it would sit there and run and chug for about 30 seconds. It was <laughs> When my brother drove it at Lakeview, it was voted ugliest car in Lakeview. I was actually a bit disappointed when I didn't win that award for that car you know, seven years after. you know, It wasn't in any better shape, wasn't any prettier than when he drove it, but at that point, there was a, a couple of maybe worse cars at Lakeview that were, were all in the running. So, you know, hey... <laughs> Um, one of my favorite memories of grade school for fifth grade graduation from Goliad Elementary, Go Eagles. Uh, I still know, I, I, mean, hell, I graduated high school with three quarters of my, you know, Goliad you know, kindergarten class. It was quite unusual, apparently, in this day and age, and you know, it, it was really cool. I still see some of my kindergarten friends running around. Uh, shout out to Tim Dixon. <laughs> I'm supposed to see him later to bring me a receipt for some minuscule tax, you know, write-off donation I made. Five bucks, yeah. I go real, real proud of myself on that, five whole bucks. Anyway, fifth grade graduation. We had to learn uh, Bette Midler's Wind Beneath My Wings, and we learned the sign language to go along with it. You know, Wind Beneath My Wings, and Fly, and all this other crap. And I really wish I'd paid more attention. I learned the song, and learned the, learned the words, and we sang it, and had the tape playing and everything, and and it, 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 it always makes me just 
still cool that we learned this you know, whole song and American Sign Language routine to it. I, I think mom and dad always got a big kick out of it. I'm sure there's a VHSC video or something running around here somewhere. I'm sure it's still in existence. If I can find it, I'll try to include some of it in this in this video. <laughs> I remember once we uh, I had a waterbed growing up. Not until I was in my teens, I think. But big old super single waterbed. And I friggin' absolutely love this waterbed. It was one of my favorite things in the world. Had uh, drained it for whatever reason, maybe to clean it or something. And we were filling it up from the outside water hose and went to go eat dinner and completely forgot about the waterbed. Finished up eating dinner, walked back in the bedroom. And, you know, the bed normally was two, three feet off the ground. Well, just the mattress, the water-filled part, was at least three, maybe four feet above the top of the waterbed. It's supposed to be not even flush with it. And it was it was this close to popping. Oh, my God. Ah, we all ran outside and turned the water hose and pulled the you know hose off and started to let it drain. And it took every ounce of willpower I had not to go jump on that thing. I wanted to jump on it and just explode it and just see how much it flooded the house. But I also... Like not getting spankings, so I decided that's probably not the best idea. I knew it wasn't a good idea in the first place, but god damn it, it, it took everything I had not to go jump on that waterbed or poke it or, ugh, it, was, it was really stupid. <laughs> but <laughs> I really, really wanted to do that. Um, I Back to the Buick, I seem to get pulled over a lot in that car. Maybe they remembered my brother or my cousin, Pam, I'm not sure which, but... I, there was at least two times I got pulled over in that car, and, the, and, it, and it was like a 45-minute traffic stop. I didn't drink. I didn't do drugs back then. And <laughs> it just amazed me that this, you know, A-B student, never, never in trouble, and I would constantly get pulled over in this car. I, I don't know why. They, I guess they hated, you know, bird poop-stained Buicks. <laughs> One of my, my favorite memories of Dad, he uh, he worked for the highway department as I mentioned earlier. He he found a butterfly knife on the side of the road once, and brought it home and cleaned it up and polished it and sharpened it, and gave it to me. So I guess that's playing with it. I gave it to my buddy Mike. He actually could do all that, you know, flipping it around stuff, and it was pretty neat. But what Dad didn't tell us was that he sharpened both sides of it. If you if you've ever used a butterfly knife, you know you do the whole flicking around thing and all that stuff, and you don't sharpen one side of the blade. I mean, you know the back side you leave it dull because you, you know, that's what you you know you use to you know, counter. You know, you're when you're flipping it around all that kind of crap. And Mike you know, didn't know at the time that my dad had sharpened both blades, and so he's sitting there spinning it and doing this and that, and all you know flicks it back towards his knuckles, and and it cut the ever living ever loving crap out of him. <laughs> He threw the knife down and started shaking his hand and ended up flinging blood all over me. And you know, AIDS was a huge deal at the time. And we all kind of freaked out and just, it was stupid as hell. <laughs> Thanks, Dad, for sharpening both sides of a fucking butterfly knife. But hey, I love you anyway. You didn't know. <laughs> uh, you know, overall, I'd say I had a, I had a pretty good childhood. I got in trouble, you know, my fair share, maybe more than my fair share, but I definitely had a very loving family, mom and dad, you know, grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles. I I couldn't have asked for a better childhood, really. And, you know, I'd, I'd asked dad the other night if he had any words of wisdom to share with future generations and, you know, As much as I messed up, I would have plenty of wisdom by now. Take good care of your teeth. <laughs> After, uh, you know, avoid Dr. Pepper and, you know, sweet coffee. It's, it's it's murder on your teeth, as I'm finding out now. Probably be having dentures in the next year, and I'm not even 40. Not looking forward to that. But also not changing my habits, because I'm a dick. <laughs> um, you know, be, be kind to one another. You know, just... We're all on this planet together. It's the only planet we're 
currently living on and capable of living on, which we also need to get the hell off. So if you're hearing this in the future, get off Earth. Go to Mars, go to the moon, Venus. Get the hell off. Maybe insulate us. You know, what a Jupiter's moons or Saturn's or something. Get the hell away from Earth. We got to we, we got to start colonizing other planets. All it's going to take is one asteroid, and we go the way of the dinosaurs. You know, it's really stupid. Put politics aside and get the hell off of Earth. I also asked him if he had any regrets. Dad said no. He wouldn't change a he wouldn't change a thing, and I respect that. You know, your your mistakes and your successes make you who you are. But there, there, there are a number of things that I regret and would definitely change. There's a number of women I've dated that I would, looking back, you know, they they were they they were Mrs. Right, you know, they were just as, as perfect as could be, and my stupid ass wanted the you know the bigger better deal you know, a little prettier a little smarter a little this a little that whatever it's stupid you know i should be you know, i should have you know four kids by now and maybe a grandkid or two you know i'm, so I'm pushing 40 you know i'm not definitely not getting any younger i know i still look amazing and all but uh yeah <laughs> let's see yeah i mean i there's really not that much I would change, you know, maybe maybe going to college or even just a trade school. But hey, it's not too late. I could still go. Uh, you know, kind of thinking about rolling in a flight school. Who wouldn't love to be a pilot, right? Uh, let's see. My favorite car. I don't really have a favorite car. Maybe Knight Rider car, you know, which was the 82 to 84 Trans Am. My favorite vehicle in general would definitely be the, the, the B-17 bomber. Not the G. Screw the G. I hate that stupid chin turret. But any other bomber, you know, like the Memphis Bell, that, that's you know, my favorite, favorite, I guess you could really call it an automobile, but I mean my favorite machine, my favorite moving vehicle would definitely be the B-17. Um, my favorite musician, definitely Weird Al, hands down. Although, if you ask me that in the late 80s, early 90s, I, it might have been a toss-up between Weird Al and Garth Brooks. Quite a, quite a change there, I know, but also a huge fan of big band jazz, Benny Goodman, Glenn Miller. Loved playing a jazz band when I was a kid. I played trumpet for damn near 20 years in a rock band and in marching bands and stuff, and it was it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, there's like like they say in Blues Brothers 2000, there's there's no pharmaceutical that gives you the same feeling as being on stage when the when the when the band is in the groove and the crowd is rocking and clapping and dancing and singing and shouting. It's nothing like it. If you can pick up an instrument and learn how to play one, I I, I couldn't recommend anything higher than than learning how to play an instrument. Um, do -do 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 -do. I don't really have any memories of JFK. I was too young. <laughs> or you know, or Woodstock. I love the Beatles, even though they were mostly gone by the time I've, I've, I I came around. I vaguely remember the you know space shuttle Challenger exploding. It was it was a pretty big deal. But I, I I remember Columbia exploding more. I was older than you know that. Nine eleven. I was driving a school bus. I was I was actually at my parents' house stopping to use the bathroom in between bus bus routes. And I, I turned on the news, and I'd seen that the, the you know a bomb or something had exploded at the Trade Center. But I'm like, oh well, this must be the anniversary of that one that they you know that's that exploded in the parking lot. No big deal. I just you know got back in the bus and went on. And by the time I started picking up some kids, you know they started announcing over the radio that something had happened. And you know, it was this man, it it changed the world, and not not in a good way, man. We we've uh, lost a lot of freedom since then. You know, a lot of people died, and a lot more people have died since then, and you know, it's, it's, it's really bad. It's, it's, it's really a shitty thing to do, and our response was, was equally as shitty. Yeah, we went and killed the guys that did it, but then we killed a million more Afghanis who were, had nothing to do with it. Okay, whatever. You know, that's, that's politics, and let's try to avoid that for this. <laughs> um, favorite movie? I'm not a favorite guy. I, I have multiples of everything. Quickly Down Under, Back to the Future, RoboCop. I don't really have one favorite of anything for the most part, but I'm an Android man. 
iPhone sucks. Regardless of whatever you say, Dave. <laughs> That's my roommate. He's... Anyway, yeah. So, uh, thank you again for watching this. I'm going to go have a smoke. So I'm a cigarette smoker like a jerk. Don't, don't smoke cigarettes, kids. Uh, especially my nephews. Do not ever take up cigarettes. They're just the stupidest, stupidest shit in the world. Sincerely. <laughs> thank you all for watching. I hope you found this informative, if not entertaining. Hopefully a little entertaining. I mean, I'm a pretty funny guy, I think. Not just counting looks and smell. And I'm going to hit the road. So, thank you.